In this video, we're going to look at parametric EQs. They're also called peak or notch filters, and sometimes they're even called bell filters because of the shape of the curve that's created by them. So basically, a parametric EQ is the most powerful of all EQs because it gives us the most precision control over specific areas in the frequency range. It's a tuned filter that offers either boost or cut, and it operates on a specific band of frequencies, and the width of the band is variable, and this is what makes it so powerful, and that variable width control is called Q on most plugins. And the Q control adjusts how wide or narrow or how steep this type of band is. So there's three main parameters that we set when we're using parametric EQs. The frequency, so we set the center frequency of each band. We set how much gain or cut we want with the gain control. And the Q sets the width of the band. And the higher the Q number, the narrower the band. So here's an example of a Pro Tools single band parametric EQ with a narrow Q value, and you see here the Q is 6, and it's narrow. And these are great for targeting specific areas of the frequency spectrum. One technique that's often used, and we're going to look at this later in the videos, is creating a narrow band with a steep boost and sweeping around to find the problematic frequencies and then scooping them out. And here's an example of a same single band parametric EQ with a wide Q value, and you see here that the Q is... 0.87 and it's much more gradual slope so it affects the surrounding frequencies more and this is very powerful as a general rule and of course rules are meant to be broken with this type of bell-shaped eq when you're boosting it's generally because you're finding an area in the frequency spectrum that's pleasing and you want to enhance and it generally is not pinpointed at a specific narrow band so you want just a couple of db of gain in a very wide q so that you're boosting the surrounding frequencies gradually as well and conversely, when you're cutting out, you generally want a much steeper band and more dB of reduction so that you can sort of surgically remove problem areas. And that's even referred to as surgical EQ. Now, another type of parametric EQ has fixed bandwidth, but sweepable frequency range. And you often see these on mixing boards when they have three bands of EQ. They're often called things like low, high, and mid, or maybe high, mid, low, mid. And there's a sweepable mid-range control, but no way to adjust the width. So that's often called a semi-parametric EQ or even a paragraphic EQ. And here's an image of one where you see four bands of EQ. We have low frequency, low mid, high mid, and high frequency. And we have variable gain for each of them. And we can sweep the frequencies, but there's no width control. So here's another example. In Pro Tools, they have notch filters separate from parametric. So with this little icon engaged, we're going to look at it in a moment in Pro Tools. But this is a notch filter, and you'll notice that there's a width control and a frequency, but there's no gain because this is meant for notching out specific problem frequencies dramatically. And here's an example with a notch filter with a wide Q, and here's one with a narrow Q. And again, it notches it all the way out and there's no gain control, but we can also kind of make a notch filter just using a parametric band or peak EQ as it's called here in Pro Tools in this mode where you do have all three controls and you just set up a narrow or wide band and pull it down as much as you want. I actually like these better. They give you a bit more control. And in Pro Tools Notch Filter, the Q sort of feels and functions differently. So this is a regular parametric band and it acts as either peak or notch depending on how you have it set. So that's a little overview of parametric EQs. Let's look at how all this works within a DAW. Here we are in Pro Tools 10 and I'm going to play you that same guitar part we used a few videos ago. And here it is with no EQ, and we're going to look at a few different parametric EQs on it. Here it is. I'm putting it through some amp processing. I'll bypass it and then put it on so you can hear what the amp processing is doing. That's it with nothing. So here's a one-band simple EQ from Pro Tools, and you can select what type of band you want. You can use high pass, notch, high shelf, low pass, peak, that's their term for a parametric EQ, peak filter, or low shelf. So let's look at peak. So here we have the Q control, the frequency, and gain. And I'll unbypass it, and I'll just show you a couple of different possible workflows. So let's say to start with, I'm going to boost a narrow band, and I'm going to sweep around and see if I can find some areas that are problematic and then pull them down. OK, 
okay, there's a little bit of honkiness around here that I'm not liking, so maybe I want to bring that down a little bit. So I'm just going to bring it down a couple of dBs, and I'm going to widen the band so that I'm pulling out some of the surrounding frequencies as well. So that's one typical approach of how you might use a parametric EQ on a part like this. Now, another one is to, let's say, find some sweet spots and enhance that. And let's do the same thing. I'm going to sweep around a bit. Maybe with a wider cue this time. So let's say I wanted to give it a bit of cut to poke through a bit. I might want to boost it a couple of dB around there just to give it a little bit of an edge. And again, I would generally probably do a wider cue like this and do something like that. Just to add a subtle amount, or let's say I maybe want to warm it up a bit and add something on the low end. See, I might give a nice broad boost around there if I really want to get it sort of heavier and thicker sounding down low, maybe something like that. give it a bit of weight down there. It's nice depending what's happening in the bass. So these are just some average approaches one might use. Now often with these types of parametric EQs, we have multi-band equalizers in most DAWs and they have several different bands. Let me bypass this and I'll call this one up, which is a seven band version. And as I say, most DAWs have multi-band EQs like this and often many of the bands are swappable for how you want to use them. Now, for example, in this one, the first band is swappable between a high-pass filter or a notch. So let's put this band in and we'll see what this sounds like. Here's the slope. And as notch, we have the two controls, frequency and Q, the width, but no actual gain control. But let's look at the more traditional parametric bands. So those are swappable. This one's swappable. This one is swappable between a low shelf or a parametric band. And these three middle ones are dedicated to parametrics. And this one is, again, a high shelf filter or parametric. And this is low mid frequency, mid frequency, and high mid. So let's look at these where we have the Q control, frequency, and gain. There's a bit of ring right around there. You hear that resonance? So I'm going to bring that down. So one approach might be to bring this down dramatically and leave a steep cue like this. You don't really hear much of a difference, but it just eliminates that resonant frequency. This isn't really a particularly bad part with a lot of resonances, so maybe it's not the greatest example because it's actually a pretty good sound that we're getting, but that's one approach if you have some bad resonances. In this particular case, I would probably do something like this with a much narrower cue and just sweep out a lot of the surrounding frequencies and just a couple of dB. Just to thin it out a little bit there. So in general, the wider the cue you have, the less dB of reduction or boost you need in order to hear the effect. And of course here we can have multiple bands going on because this is a multiple band EQ. Maybe I'll give a nice narrow boost there. Add a bit of cut. And of course, you can bypass one band at a time. So we're going to look at EQing various instruments in a real mix in the second half of these videos, but just to give you an idea of how parametric EQs work. And here's another example of one. I'm going to bypass that. And here's a channel strip plugin within Pro Tools. And again, some of the bands are swappable and some act as parametric EQs. And same kind of principle. We can work graphically like this and adjust the frequency either there or in the graphic interface, adjust the gain and adjust the width. Yeah, 
in general, with this guitar part, with all the different EQs we used, I find in the low mids like this, I would probably cut away a couple of dBs of a wide band just to get a little bit of that honkiness removed there. So there's a little introduction to parametric EQs. We're going to be using them and looking at them in a lot more detail when we work on our piece of music. And in the next video, before we get started, we're going to look at some tips and hints and strategies for how to think about using EQ as we begin to apply it in a real mix.